You're listening to an IEA podcast. Today, you'll hear analysis out of the IEA's Brexit unit, led by our chief economist, Julian Jessup. Digital officer Madeline Grant asked Julian an overarching question, which has been on many people's minds. Is Brexit actually going ahead? Julian notes that we live in politically turbulent times, and nobody can take anything for granted anymore. That said, Julian does think Brexit is going ahead, but the type of Brexit that we get still seems up for discussion. Julian highlights that a plan is needed for if the UK gets a deal, for if it gets a transitional agreement, or if it gets no deal at all. If you like what you hear, visit our website, iea.org.uk, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, username IEA London. So last week, Vince Cable came out and said that he thinks that Brexit may now not take place. Now, my question is, how seriously should we take these views? Do they represent something more profound than just wishful thinking on the part of politicians who didn't want Brexit to take place? Well, I think we do need to take these concerns very seriously. Uh, It's only a small risk that Brexit doesn't happen, but a huge missed opportunity. After all, there have been an enormous number of big political surprises over the last few years, both in this country and abroad. Um, A decision to remain within the European Union would be on the same scale, but I think it would be foolish to dismiss the possibility. What would have to take place, do you think, for Brexit not to go ahead? I think a number of things would have to come together. I mean, first of all, there'd have to be a breakdown in the talks with our European partners, so it was clear that we weren't getting um, any sort of deal, let alone a good one from them. I think secondly, you'd probably need some clear evidence that the concerns about Brexit are starting to have a major impact on the economy. Uh, If growth continued to weaken over the rest of the year, and we looked like we're heading back into recession. And maybe the third thing is possibly a change in the political landscape here. Um, If, for example, there were a change from a Conservative to a Labour government, uh, that could be the catalyst for a rethink on, on our policy towards Brexit. So a number of things, if you like, would have to go wrong at the same time. Um, But to the extent that Brexit fears do seem to be growing at the moment, this will just be a continuation of the current trend. On your third point, um, you say there would have to be a shake-up perhaps in in the governance of this country for Brexit to be thwarted. Um, But interestingly, I think it was just over 100 MPs voted for Chuck Umina's amendment, which was, in word only, regretting that the Queen's speech did not consider the possibility of remaining in the customs union or single market. So it was roundly defeated. Does that not suggest that there is not much of a mandate for a soft Brexit? Hmm. Well, at the moment, the opinion polls do suggest that the majority of the British public are happy to leave the European Union in the sense either that they voted for it or they think that even if they didn't vote for it, they should abide with the results of the referendum. So um, I think there's still quite a lot of political will to leave the European Union. But the question is, what form will the departure take? Um, Even if we do formally leave the European Union, so Brexit happens in that respect, we might still retain a lot of the economic relationships that have been holding back the UK economy over the last several decades, in which case we've left the European Union in one sense, but we're stuck with, for example, the single market and the constraints of the customs union, in which case arguably we're no better off outside, and in some respects actually we'll be worse off. That would be a kind of Brexit in, in name only? but not a true Brexit. Well, that's exactly right. I think if you're going to achieve the full benefits of Brexit, then a number of things need to happen. First of all, uh, you have to leave the single market. That's essential if you're going to escape some of the the regulation that's imposed on us by by the rest of Europe. Um, It's also important to if you're able, looking to regain control of our borders and have a more sensible policy on on immigration. Um, Equally, leaving the customs union is essential if we're planning to do our own free trade deals with the rest of the world, which I think is an area of huge opportunity for the UK. Correspondingly, if we remain either in the single market or in the customs union, or indeed both, and then arguably in economic terms, we haven't left the European Union at all. Looking forward to the Brexit unit we'll be doing uh, over the next few months, what are the key areas, do you think, that really need to be capitalised on to make sure that we get a a true Brexit, but also one that, as you say, is taking advantage of all the available opportunities? Well, the first key point is that we need to have a a long-term vision uh, for what our future is going to be when we've left the European Union. Um, That needs to be a vision built, I think, on free trade, uh, not just with the European Union as we have now, but with the rest of the world. Um, It has to be based on a vision of less regulation, less government intervention in the economy. Um, And it has to be based on a system of uh, more logical policies towards things like migration uh, and the way that we determine our own laws. 
those are the big prizes to get in the long term. In the short term, there is a question about the transition, and we want obviously the transition to be as smooth as possible. But we don't want transitional arrangements to become permanent constraints on the economy. If we have a transitional arrangement that simply replicates where we are now and never get around to changing it, uh, then the UK is no better off and arguably would be worse off. If we had, let's say, a transitional agreement where uh, we we have a deal with the EU but we fail to re- reach a further deal, that transitional deal surely would have to come to an end because we would then be forced to revert to WTO rules. Yes, yeah, so there are various messy scenarios here. I mean, One is that we get an unsatisfactory transitional deal that means that we drift on for a few years longer in a sort of limbo between membership of the European Union and, and being fully outside. Uh, and we don't use that time to negotiate something a lot better. Um, That will simply prolong the uncertainty that is currently overhanging the the British economy. Um, I think if there were a risk of that happening, we'd better decide sooner rather than later that we weren't going to get a proper deal and start to prepare for life outside the European Union a lot quicker. Uh, For example, to put in place the improved customs control that we would need in order to operate outside the European Union simply on WTO rules. And in any event, we probably need to prepare for no deal simply to make that as a credible threat to make sure that the European Union is willing to offer us the best deal that's in both our sides' best interests. Going back to um, the question of how how definite is our departure from the EU, if, let's say, that one of those nightmare scenarios that you describe where the economy performs so badly in Brexit that there was a huge shift in public opinion, potentially a shift in politicians and so on, am I right in thinking that now that it's passed through Parliament Article 50 and so on, we've given our assent to the Queen's speech. Is that not law now, and does it not have to take place? I tend not to get too obsessed about legal technicalities. I think if the if the political will is there, then anything is possible. Um, the European Union in itself has signalled that it would be quite happy for us to reconsider our decision to leave uh, and to remain a member, or indeed to, to reapply at some point in the future. Um, so I think the legal technicalities can be done away with. Um, at the end of the day, though, the British Parliament is, is sovereign. If, I'm sure that if we decided by a parliamentary vote to, to go back in, then even if there had been a referendum to leave, then that would be the decision. We would therefore remain a member of the European Union if the political will was there. So for people who think that Brexit's going ahead, um, perhaps it's too early for people to be complacent about that um, and perhaps they should take more seriously the claims of people like Vince Cable. As it happens, I, I'm an optimist. I see Brexit as a, as a huge opportunity to create a more vibrant, dynamic, open economy uh, with benefits for all, not just in the UK, but also in the rest of Europe and indeed the rest of the world. But there are still a number of things that could go wrong. I mean, One is simply the possibility that we don't leave at all. Maybe the bigger risk is that we do leave, but on very bad terms and therefore aren't able to achieve those benefits. So in summary, while Brexit is a huge opportunity, um, there are many, many risks along the way which is why it's so important to have a strong free market voice in all of the many debates that lie ahead. You've been listening to the IEA's Julian Jessup and Madeline Grant. For more on the IEA's Brexit unit, visit our website at iea.org.uk.